I am Karin Bhatia chatting with Michael and Alantez Fox, and we're going to obviously talk about the massive robbery, robbery. situation. Um, but first, how are you guys doing? It's obviously been a few days uh, since the, the situation happened. Uh, Michael, I'll start, I'll start with you. How, how are you holding up? I'm good. You know, um, everybody, you know, the, you know, every, everybody on social media, you know, basically uh, standing, standing by me and, and uh, acknowledging what they all saw. And we're, we're all in agreement that it was a robbery. You know, it's, it, you know, we, we get about, we, we just got back in the gym, you know, we're uh, getting ready for whatever comes next. And uh, Alantes, I mean, I, I know we'll, we'll talk more specifics, but this was obviously your, your younger brother fighting. You, you wanted him to win this uh, interim title, of course, and have success, and it was taken away from you. Now that it's been a few days, how, how are you holding up right now? I feel good. I mean, you know, with the outpouring of love we got from social media, basically all over the internet and the whole world seeing what happened and acknowledging what happened, it just, it's actually an amazing feeling. It's, it's actually way better than... It was at first, you know, when it when it, when it initially happened. Of course, we were devastated, to be honest with you. And now it's just it's it's like it's it's, it's almost a little bit better than it would have been had Mike won. So let's let's talk about the fight a little bit, um, Michael. I'll start with you, uh, Gabriel Mastre, he's from Venezuela, I should say. And uh, of course, we know WBA located there does business there. They also have offices in Panama, but was mostly located there. This was for the WBA uh, interim title. Um, you were brought in as a fairly late opponent. What did you know about your opponent, Mastre, when they brought up uh, this fight with you? Um, well, I had seen, I had known he was a two-time Olympian. He did a lot of fighting in the uh, WSB. Um, what that's the World Series of Boxing. Um, and I knew it was I knew it was uh, three and zero with three knockouts. That's pretty much all I knew. I knew he, and I knew he was um I knew he was all, uh, I knew he was still conventional. So that's pretty much all I knew. I, I watched him. I studied him and everything. But you know, um, coming in as I came in as a backup, I got the uh, call. That I was gonna be fighting by on like eleven days notice. But um, but I had been in the gym. I'd always been in the gym. We, we were always in the gym. So I was preparing. I was still preparing for that date. Uh, I didn't know who I would have to fill in for, but and I didn't know if I would have to fill in for anyone. But when I got the when I got the day we dedicated those last eleven days to uh, to, to fighting to being able to uh, defeat him. So I mean, going in so going in going into this war, I was you know I was prepared. If not, you know, I prepared myself to be at my sharpest. I didn't really worry about who I'd be fighting because I was unsure of who it was. So I just made sure I could bring the best. Uh, Michael Fox in the table. And, and Alantes, I know you've been in this game for a long time. We've seen you on, on top platforms like HBO and elsewhere. Uh, when you heard about this opportunity uh, for your brother, uh, what were you thinking? Were you telling him that this is a good opportunity and, and it's a fight that he should take? Of course. I was ecstatic about this situation. I mean, you know, at first we, we, were, we were a bit apprehensive just because we're going in there, they're training for backup to be to, to be the backup for like six different people. You know, that's three different fights, so six different people. And then, you know, he gets the call from Maestro. I'm like, I'm looking at Maestro and, and not really, not saying I'm not worried, but basically not worried. Like, I know Michael Fox is coming. I know we're coming to be the best Michael Fox can be. And I, I don't think, I, don't, I didn't think uh, Game of Maestro uh, presented much of a challenge, to be honest with you. And as you can see, it was like that. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about the fight, but, but there was some drama even before the fight. And we saw the situation with the gloves. Um, but, but Michael, let me ask you this. I heard there was even a situation that maybe we didn't see in the locker rooms before that. So what, what was going on there with the gloves and the taping? Yeah, um, I had sent my cut man over to uh, watch them rap. You know, it's a world title fight. You know, they sent the guy to our, our, our locker room as well. And, um, you know, he was, you know, he was placing tape. He was doing. He was stacking, you know, tape, gauze, then tape, them uh, tape gauze, then more tape. And um, you know, my uh, cutman had to tell him, no, y'all can't do that. You know, um, he had to let the he learned the inspector let him know he got y'all got to tell him he can't do that. Um, you know, I don't. I'm not sure. Like, I also look when I look at my history, I saw he fought in Colombia. I don't know what the uh, I don't know what Colombia's uh, commission is like. I don't know if they allow that, but um, it, it's not allowed here. So we so we so we definitely didn't allow him to do that. Uh, that night and then we go to the uh we go to the ring and we saw and then uh y'all saw what happened with the glove 
uh, he was he was trying to uh, they were they were skinning the gloves. Uh, we had to make sure they fixed that as well. So and my, I told my brother in my mind we're already two rounds up because on the biggest fight of uh, both our careers he doesn't get to do something he's normally accustomed to doing. So that's a, those are those are victories for me mentally. And uh, your father and trainer Troy Fox was was uh, the one to point this out. Um, Alanta, I'm sure that you were in the corner, but I'm sure you were giving advice uh, to your brother when all of this with the the gloves was going on. I mean, what what were you telling him? Were you telling him to just stay focused and be ready for the fight? Yeah, just stay focused. I mean, with the with the with the hand wrap thing back in the locker room. I mean. I figured they would try to take any advantage they wanted. I mean, they could get uh, to fight Mike. I mean, Mike Mike had this guy by at, at least a foot, you know what I mean, or about a foot. So, you know, I, I can see them trying to uh, trying to do whatever they possibly can with the glove thing. You know, I mean, when they, when they, uh, my, my father told me to put the stool in so he could sit down and everything so Mike could just just chill, you know. But that was just, just that that was kind of a blower because as Mike, Mike's, Mike's basically locked in, you know, he's ready to go. He ready to go out there and tap gloves and get on it. You know, he done he done warmed up in the back and just made it it, it, it made it slow. It made it made him uh, freeze up a little bit. But I guess at the same point it, it made uh Gavin Marastri uh see uh freeze up a bit too. So I mean, all in all, I mean, yeah, like I said, I told Michael Fox to stay to stay, you know, stay ready. And he went out there and boxed his ass off. If anyone has followed both of your careers, uh, you guys usually are almost definitely always have the height advantage. You're able to use that that length, and it's amazing that you're able to get down to the weights that you have competed at, um, and that that is certainly a, a huge advantage there, and, and you guys are able to use it. And, Michael, you were able to use that in the fight, scoring the knockdown in round two, seemingly dominating uh, all the way through. On Marcos Viegas' unofficial scorecard, he had you winning every single round except for one. Um, and, and he's usually dead on with his score. So, uh, right. it was, it was a quite impressive performance. Um, Michael, at, you know, as you look back, uh, at the fight and your performance, I mean, how would you, how would you rate your performance? How did you feel in there? Um, I felt great. You know, it was, a, it was, a, I had been a year removed from competition due to injuries and whatnot, but, um, you know, if I had to rate it, I would probably rate it, you know, about a B plus a minus after like. Um, because just because, you know, I knocked him down with it, with a, uh, with, with the hand that I, I injured, I had I actually had fractured. And then, um, and, and, you know, I, I boxed clean. I, I landed the more eye catching shots. I made him miss big haymakers. You know, um, I think, you know, I think, you know, that fight, you know, I think I should definitely be, uh, the interim champion right now. And Alon says, as you were watching your brother do his thing in there, scoring the knockdown, I'm sure you uh, felt that you were comfortably in control. Um, Alon says, when, when you heard those scorecards being read, uh, first of all, the fact that they were so close to even begin with, a 114-113 was crazy to even hear that, let alone the fact that it went the other way. Um, but but Alon says, walk me through your, your thought process as you heard those scores get announced and then the eventual outcome. So as soon as the fight is over, I mean, when Mike comes back to the corner, all of us are celebrating. We already know that he's put on a hell of a performance. There's no way he can take they can take this from him, right? So when I hear the first score, I see Mike's face, and Mike's like, like what? Like you know? But I'm I'm just like, don't worry about that. No matter how close that scorecard was, bro, that has to be you. There's no way anybody saw him win, right? And we hear the second scorecard, and I'm like, okay, that's a little bit better. You know, uh, that's that's even better for Mike. That's fine. They're not reading off. They're not reading off for uh, who it was for. It's just in that They read off the last scorecard. It's one seventeen, one ten. Now, initially, initially speaking, I'm looking. I'm like, ah, uh, uh, that you know that that's, that score sounds a bit off. I mean, no. Initially speaking, I wasn't thinking nothing about it. I'm like, one seventeen, one ten. That's easily Mike. That means Mike won. Mike, we got this. Let's go. You know, have a decision. When they when they said uh and still undefeated, I immediately like what 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 are you what are you talking? Because I know Mike, I know Mike has two losses. I'm like, it's there's no way they're about to read this other guy. I'm, I was thinking at any point in time, Timmy Lynn Jones will come back and say the complete opposite. I, I know he probably was appalled at what he had to read. I mean, you know, it was there was no there was no way at all in my mind that Mike lost that fight at all. You know, so watching it, I mean, so listening to it and, and, you know, just it's like it's like everything kind of slowed down for me. Like, what the hell is going on here? You know, but I mean, I, I, mean, I guess there's really no but to that. I mean, I just I, 
Like, you know, you saw what was going on. They, they were trying to get every advantage they can so they could they could take it to steal it. They just stole it from Mike. I was just I was I was pissed. And and uh, you know we've seen some terrible robberies in boxing. This is obviously up there uh, with with some of the terrible ones we've seen. Uh, M- Mike, I'll, I'll ask you. I mean, they're they're announcing these scorecards. I'm sure you're thinking the first few scores seem even too close. Um, but I'm I'm guessing uh, that the you know there was absolutely no part of you that thought there's any chance that that you would be robbed. Um, am, am I wrong in that, or, or did that cross your mind at all? And then what was it like to hear the scorecards eventually? Yeah, no, I, you know, honestly, I thought with the, you know with the fight I fought, I thought no, there's no way they can take this. Robbery. There's no, I, I well, no, the idea of a robbery never came across. I was, I was, uh, you know, when I went back to my corner and they said, "Yo, you did it," you know, my my, my coach, my, uh, both my coaches and my coming and my promoter all said, "Man, you did it." They're going by, they by, you're a world champion, you know. Um, and the new, and I, yeah. And then I hear the scores, and um, you know, one fourteen to one thirteen. I made you see. I made a face because like that. That seems too close to be a. Uh, that seems too close. That doesn't seem like the fight I fought. Then it was the one fifteen to uh, with that one twelve, and then um, I was like, okay, that sounds a little better. And then one seventeen to one ten. I like that has to be. That, that's me. I thought there was never a time I thought anything else. So um, so so to hear uh, to hear to hear them say uh, and still undefeated. I was blown away, you know, jaw, jaw dropped, jaw dropped in the middle of the ring, you know, and just frozen in disbelief just because, like, I know the fight I fought. Like, I boxed, I boxed his socks off, man. And then, <laughs> but then they just snatched it, but then they just snatched it from me. And, you know, I heard, and and, and, and just to reaffirm what I, what I already knew, I heard the crowd booing. I saw my, my team in, also in disbelief. And I just knew, like, man, they 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 took this from me. It's no way. It's no way they. Uh, I love that fight. You know, as I get out the ring, everybody's calling to me, like, yo, yo, you won. That people in the crowd. So it was it was like to you know the crowd embracing me was uh helped it you know helped me you know to to to, to kind of to, to 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 swallow that disbelief you know. And, um, and you couldn't hear it, but the broadcast was also obviously on your side. Uh, as was, I can imagine, mostly everyone watching. Right. Um, and and just to just to follow up on that, Mike, I, I noticed that Maestre actually came over to you, and you know when the decision was announced, he was saying something. Uh, you were interacting with his trainer or someone in his his corner. What what was the dialogue going on there? Well, I'm not sure what they said. None of them spoke uh, English. They were well. I, I shook I shook Maestre's hand. I'm not even sure. What I just shook his hand out of sportsmanship. I mean, truly, he fought his fight. It, I mean, he can't. He can't control. No one, neither one of us can really control that. His his coach was trying to mock me or something, but I didn't understand what he was saying. So, um, I didn't. I couldn't say. I couldn't say much back. You know, they would be like, "It's easy to talk trash in a different language." Say say something. Say something when say say something when we when we uh both can understand it. But um, but yeah, I'm not exactly sure what what he said. I just I could I could tell he was trying to mock me though, but I it was nothing you could really say. I put your man down, you know, and 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 I and I beat him handily. I knew that I knew that in my I knew that in my heart, and everybody that watched that night knew uh, knew what happened. That certainly was the the consensus all around. Alon says when when Mike came back to the corner, uh, we saw you speaking to him. We saw you also talk to the ref really quick. Um, it looked like you were getting clarification on something, maybe maybe just a score. What was what was going on there? You know, at the end when you came back to the corner after the decision. Of course, I, I reaffirmed. I reaffirmed Mike to fight man. He, he did that. He won that fight man. He robbed. I had to let him know that. You know, I told him. I let him know I was when we first came back to him. I let him know how proud of him I was. I was. I was very. I'm still very proud of him. He fought. Like it, he he paid the hell of a night to shine. You know, he paid the hell of a night to step up and do his thing. So when he came back to the corner, I, you know, I just re- I, I, I reassured him that you did you did everything you needed to do, bro. I don't know what I don't know what happened. I did. The only thing you possibly could have done is knock this dude out. And then when the ref came over to us uh, and the commission came over to us, I asked them to do interviews. Like, Are y'all about to do interviews or something like? Because I I felt like you know maybe Mike would get a chance to speak or say his piece, but. Also, I, I forgot. I forgot how um, how how much of the the TV slot had, had been had, had expired because we, they were doing the glove stuff. So, I mean, you know, I, I really I thought, like I said, I thought we were gonna do some interviews or something. You know, we could talk about how stupid that was, how crazy that was. But I mean, it is what it is. And of course, what makes it 
so much worse is is the you know aftermath. Um, people on on Twitter and elsewhere have seen the racist tweets uh, by the judge Gloria Martinez Rizzo. Right. She has since been suspended. Um, but but let me let me ask you this. Uh, let me ask you this, Michael. I mean, is that even enough uh, for the the type of things that she was saying and then handing in this scorecard and. Um, you know, it's up to people how they want to connect the dots, but it seems to be a pretty direct correlation there. Is, is a suspension even enough? I mean, does more need to be done here? Um, I think with what was uncovered about her, she probably doesn't really need to judge again. I mean, I just have a hard time believing that. You, you, well, let me say first that, um, you know, boxing is minority dominated, you know, uh, black, both, black and, both black and brown as well as uh you know, European fighters and people from other countries and everything. Um, I find it, I find it a little hard to to believe that she can separate those beliefs, the beliefs outside the ring, to what's to to the people she sees in the ring. I mean, you know, I have, I just, it, 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 like seeing what I saw it makes me hard. I just, I just, feel, I just find it hard to believe that she can, uh, that she can judge without bias. And and Alanta, same question to you. I mean, what do you what would you like to see done regarding uh, Judge Gloria Martinez Rizzo? I think she should be fired. I mean, I think she should be fired. If she doesn't resign, she should be fired completely. I mean, like Mike said, it's it's hard to believe that she'll be impartial upon any on, on any stage uh, of any fight. You know, uh, based upon her beliefs outside the ring. I mean, if you feel that way about, I mean, she was talking about she was talking about Mrs. Obama. I mean, if you just out of nowhere can just say something like that and tweet something like that, then I mean, my, my I think my brother put it up on maybe on Twitter or Instagram. He said, I, I, had, I stood no chance. And basically, that's what it was. He stood no chance with it because no matter what she saw in that ring, she was not going to pick my brother. Yeah, I, I said, on, I actually said on Twitter, I said, like, once, I, once they uncovered tweets and I came across it, I, I tweeted, I retweeted what she had posted. And I said, like, I was never going to, I said to the world, I was never going to win on her card. It didn't, you can't, you can't, yeah. you can't, like, you picked the wrong, uh, the wrong black woman to call a monkey face. Those were her words. You picked the wrong, you, that, like, you picked the first, the, the, the first, uh, the, the first black first lady, and you decided to call her a monkey face. If you don't agree with her policy, that's one thing. But to, to, to be outright and blatantly disrespectful like that, it, it, her as a as a as a as a, per, as a person of color and as a woman was just way way out of pocket, and I think I, I don't think she should. Really, I don't think she should judge anymore. I don't think she judge anymore. Not just because for me, for my because I'm upset with her, but I mean this is not going to be the last time she judges judges an African American fighter if she would continue judging. The tweets are are absolutely unacceptable. The scorecard, unacceptable as well. Um, the WBA reviewed the fight. Um, they said it was close enough to order a second bout, um, but sure. and and uh, my understanding is they are looking at changing it to a no contest. If they change it to a no contest, Mike, is that even enough? I mean, I mean, you feel like you know as, as pretty much everyone else that you won this fight every round or almost every round you knocked him down. I mean. You, would you even want a no contest on your record? I mean, or or do you want this to be changed to a win for you? Well, I feel I feel I won the fight. I definitely feel I won the fight, but it's you can't rejudge the fight without without being influenced. So I'll have to settle for a no contest. But the biggest thing is uh, this: the, uh, my uh does not have, did not earn the right to be able to boast a, a victory over me. So I will have I would settle for a no contest. It just it just has to be that way. Uh, just because, you know, he didn't win, and I can't. But, yeah, he didn't win, and I can't. You can't have it reverse to a, a victory, even though even though I earned that victory, we can't have a reverse to a victory. So no contest is what it'll have to be. And and Alanta, same question for you. What do you think uh, the fight should be ruled as at this point? Uh, and and would you like to see a rematch? Does does Maestro re deserve a rematch in your opinion? I honestly don't think. Uh... I don't think Mike should want a rematch, to be honest with you. Mike made him look really silly in there. He made him look very amateurish in there. You know, they, at first the broadcasters were talking about how, how he looks really seasoned and everything. He looks really calm. He's in there going to the bar and everything. But as the fight progressed, you could just see Mike take over. For maybe, for probably from round two, you just saw him take over. I thought my, I thought my, my, uh, my rendition of the fight was uh, maybe a bit biased. So I was like, man, you know, maybe, 
maybe my 10 to 2 scorecard is is a bit, you know, that's that's a bit impartial. That's my brother. But then when I heard uh when I heard Marcos also have it 11 to 1, I was like, so it's not just me. So I don't think I, I don't think like I said, I don't think my answer deserves one, deserves a rematch, but if they did it, I think uh it would it would be a much worse boss. This is the first, that was the first time my brother had been in the ring in, uh, in a year and the first time he'd ever been 12 rounds. People forget that. So uh the if 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 he's able to prepare for in the same way for the same person, I think he he may even get a stoppage. Mike, we, we all saw uh, this, this robbery, um, and it's, it's probably a, a very tough pill to swallow to have a loss on your record, and, and we'll see what happens if it gets uh, changed. You weren't able to get that, that interim WBA belt, which I'm sure uh, you, of course, wanted. But in a way, is there a silver lining here? Was it a blessing in disguise in terms of the, the fans' uh, support? And, and it, you know, it's, it's very hard to get the boxing community to agree on one thing, and I think it's pretty much unanimous across the board uh, in terms of agreement about you winning that fight. So has it been a, a you know a silver lining in a way? Yeah, yeah. The silver lining of the uh, situation is that you know um, uh, I was I was I've been I've been to talk of boxing for the past two weeks. I've been to talk about it for the past two weeks. You know, I, my my followers on all social medias have have uh, have gone up uh, about what a thousand on Twitter, well, about twelve hundred on Instagram, and almost like two thousand on Twitter. So. I mean that was that's the silver lining. I have notoriety, and you know, all eyes will be on me for for my, for my next fight, whoever it's against. So um, it's it's still a, it's still a chance to uh to, to grow and build from uh from this fight. Um, as far as you know, the WBA has you know they they're talking they're in talks of well not really in talks of they're kind of getting rid of the interim belt anyway. So you know I think um I mean there's no really I mean there's no point in the rematch. I like. I also doubt my history would take a, take a, a second fight with me, but there's no point in a rematch. If there's uh the interim belt was supposed to get us to the the next step in the career. Gives us one of you supposed to get. It was supposed to get me into the ring with maybe I'd say a Jamal James, probably right back in Minnesota. But you know, without the interim belt, there, there doesn't really seem to be any reason to fight him again. I mean, I already beat him, it, and like I said, we got to see if he'll take it. We we have to see if he take it. Uh, we'll see what happens next. Uh, Alantes, um, any final thoughts from you? And, and last time we saw you in there was, was uh, June. Um, when, when are we going to see you back and, and, and your final thoughts? I guess my final thoughts, man, just keep, just keep watching you guys. Just keep watching us. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to take off, man. You know, this is, this is the year I feel like we can, we can really do some big things. I mean, that fight right there just happened to be a robbery. That's all, you know, but you seen that you saw the performance uh, he, he put up and, I only I only plan to match that type of performance and match that type of output. So just keep watching out for me. Like I said, I'm on I'm on every social media slides of Fox, S L Y A Z F O X. All right. As as far as getting back in the ring, I mean, we were supposed to be on on standby for Benavidez who's Katagi. But you see Benavidez, um, he he came down with COVID. You know, all, all my prayers to him and his family. I hope everything's good now for you know, prayers to a speedy recovery. But uh, you know, I I was ready to be doing the exact same thing Mike was doing. You know, put on a hell of a performance in front of the world, and uh, I thought I thought we both gotta be having two belts this August. You know, so maybe and September, maybe, but I'm not sure yet. Look forward to seeing you back in there, uh, Michael. Mm -hmm. Last last question for you. Um, you know, wh where do you go from here, and how much are you gonna continue to focus your energy on on what happened? Uh, about a week and a half ago, uh, in terms of campaigning for it to be changed to a no contest, in terms of the the, the corruption and, and things like that, or are you shifting your focus to to future fights? Um, and and what do you want to say to kind of all the new fans and supporters that you have gained through this process? Um, let me start with saying, I mean, we we sent a letter to the Minnesota Commission, our athletic commission, to consider a uh, no contest. So the balls and the balls in their court. The next set, you know, the next move is theirs. Um, Right now, I'm back in the gym. I'm focused mainly on uh, with whatever the next challenge is because that's, you know, we'll, we have to wait and see how that we'll – see, we'll see how that edges out, but, you know, I'm still working towards I'm, – I'm on my focus towards the next uh, the next task. Um, and to any all my new supporters, thank you because, I mean, we 
uh, with all the uh, out, out with all the outrage and that y'all that, that y'all let that y'all uh, displayed on social media, y'all uh, y'all gave me leverage. Y'all afforded me leverage and and uh and, and trying to fight this. So to all to all my new followers, to all my to all my to, to all the people that were with me from the start as well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you very much. And to new followers, I hope I hope you I hope you'll be around for the next fight. Cause I plan on I plan on uh, winning that one for all y'all because I owe y'all one. Alantez Fox, Michael Fox, I want to thank you so much for the time for breaking down the situation. Best of luck to both you guys in your career. I want to thank, thank you, very you for much. having us, Prime. I appreciate that.